Hi, my name is uh, Richard Silver. I go by Rick Silver. Uh, I work at NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Um, I'm a group leader there of the Surface and Nanostructure Metrology Group. It is within the uh, Semiconductor and Dimensional Metrology Division of PML, the Physical Measurement Laboratory. And we do high resolution optics. Uh, we do some nanostructured optical work where we're measuring uh, optical flats and lenses and so on. And then the uh, CD, uh, Critical Dimension AFM uh, project is also in, uh, in my group. We do metrology development work, right, measurement science in uh, direct support of the uh, semiconductor industry. We, we work with a number of the leading companies, the metrology tool manufacturers. Uh, sometimes we have direct relationships, contractual relationships. We'll have, uh, we've had assignees from the major manufacturers come to NIST and also uh, with Semitech would be another example of a close relationship where we, that, that's, that consortia allows us to, um, to c come together and work on specific projects often. I, I think today there's say maybe, I don't know, three, four, five significant things that we're working on pretty closely with the industry that are, um, they're, they're in that kind of evolution mode that where things are starting to be picked up by the industry and, and we're you know, working. So, so one of those areas is, for instance, SEM, scanning electron microscopy modeling, so model-based SEM work. Uh, we've been developing SEM electron scattering models for some time. Uh, John Villarubia, Andras Vlad are, are some of the PIs in that work. And so they've developed a pretty comprehensive uh, scattering capability over the last 10 or actually probably 15 years or so development time. And that allows them to accurately model SEM images, uh, take top-down images, and to be able to extract numbers with uncertainties. Um, another example of an area that we're pretty heavily involved in is in hybrid metrology. So this is something that over the last, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe we gave our first paper in 2009 on it, so over the last four or five years, this is an area that is uh, starting to become uh, more quantitative and adopted by, uh, by several, several companies. There's a, so some leading optical tool manufacturers, SEM makers, and chip makers who are utilizing these new methods of combining different measurement techniques. So, so our, our work has been trying to develop the quantitative and rigorous framework to, uh, com to combine these methods. Can, can I take an SEM measurement and uh, use that in the regression of an OCD uh, measurement, for instance? Um, so so that's, that's another area that we've worked quite a bit with and in combination. Uh, defect inspection is another area. We have, uh, in my group, a lot of expertise in high-resolution optical methods and optical design capabilities. Uh, we, we've been developing different kinds of ways to uh, um, structure illumination and use foyer uh, 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 illumination uh, control and engineering, and also on the collection side. Uh, in the last year, we developed a new method to do a, a volumetric defect uh, inspection. Um, so rather than just kind of going to best focus and taking a picture, we can t take a three-dimensional optical image and then do data database and get a, a, a volumetric defect show up. So we've worked quite a bit in that area with the tool manufacturers and, and with some of the leading semiconductor uh, manufacturers also. Historically, uh, defect inspection, the so-called die to database. So you have a good die, take a picture, usually at best focus in a bright field tool, and then compare that to a perfect die in the database. You take a differential image, and then the difference between those two is the defectivity. So signal to noise has, is, is a very significant challenge in that arena. Uh, as, as defects get sub-20 nanometer, then subtle variations in the features and the layout and the wafer itself also contribute defectivity. So trying to extract that defect in a noisy, imperfect environment is a very huge challenge. 
Um, I should say that there are, say, electron microscopy methods that one can see the defects clearly, but at those kinds of high magnification imaging uh, situation, the throughput is entirely unacceptable. So, so optical methods provide unique throughput. In, in the, so one of the things we've done in the paper that we're presenting, Brian Barnes is presenting, is to, uh, is to take a, rather than taking a best focus image, move the sample through focus. And then we acquire the three-dimensional optical scattered field. And we then have a three-dimensional uh, d a d good defect field, and then a one with a defect, or, or where we want to look for defectivity, subtract the two, and then you have a, a volumetric image of the defectivity. We've, we combine that with the uh, structured illumination method so that uh, we find with, with, uh, with things are very uniaxial uh, now in, in the lithography process. And so the methods that drove lithography to go that direction work very similar in optics. So having a repeated structures allows us to tune the spatial frequency of the light to the actual targets of interest. And the same thing with polarization is a, another very important uh, uh, tool to enhance defectivity. In the optics arena and in the SEM, we've done a whole lot of fundamental model development to, to see where these industries at and to try and help the individual companies uh, to implement the you know, most up-to-date and rigorous models, for instance, in the case of SEM. One of the challenges often is, uh, in the case of, say, hybrid metrology, so we've come up with a, uh, we've developed um, in, in applied optics two years ago, we, we did a, a pretty detailed paper on this, of, of the full mathematical underpinnings of using the Bayesian uh, and regression methods for hybrid metrology, but that's not necessarily immediately compatible with a high volume manufacturing environment. So, so there's some very interesting challenges in taking the rigorous um, physics and, and mathematical treatments and then w helping and working with companies and how you can extract the parts of that to improve manufacturing and metrology in that environment. It's, it's, um, that's one of the very real challenges. It's, it's one thing to do it in a laboratory at a research institute, but to then make it something that is useful for someone in a scatterometry tool in manufacturing is, is quite different.